our 1991 Dodge Colt. Our plan for this weekend is to swap out the slow 1.5 liter engine and replace it with the much more powerful 4G63T, a turbocharged 4 cylinder of Mitsubishi Eclipse. Got a cooler. This is an auto cooler out of 1990 DSM 1G. This is a motor mouse and transmission mouse. We got some radiator hoses. We've got a mass airflow sensor. This is a 14B turbocharger, which is a stock turbocharger out of a. That right there on top of the box is, is a. I call it a half shaft. I guess there's more than one name for it, but that's basically. This end plugs into the trans, and this end plugs into the CV axle. And it's to eliminate torque steer. Below that are the two axles. The axles, by the way, the ones that I ordered are, are out of a 1989 Dodge Colt GT or a 1989 Mitsubishi Mirage. Mirage GT. Mirage 1.6 liter is the exact same engine block as this one here. Find the camera there. The 1.6 liter out of a Colt GT or a Mirage is the same block as the 4G 6T. Except this is a 2 liter, and the stock engine out of a Colt GT is a 1.6 liter. So basically, you need to order the axles out of a 1989 Dodge Colt GT or a Mitsubishi Mirage turbocharged. The same part number. Those are from AutoZone, they're readily available, just friggin' order them. The half shaft is from a 1G DSM. We're hoping it's going to work. Got some throttle bodies. We got an intake manifold. I think that's out of a 1G or a 2G. I don't think it really matters. The trans is out of a 1998 front wheel drive Mitsubishi Eclipse out of a 2.4 liter, which apparently bolts right up to the 2 liter 4G63T. And then we got a harness. The harness, I think, is out of the laser, which is a 1G DSM. So that should work. Fuel rail. Flywheel. Note on flywheels. The flywheel from a front wheel drive DSM is different from an all wheel drive DSM. So if you want to front wheel drive 4G63T turbo swap your Dodge Colt, you have to use a front wheel drive flywheel. The all wheel drive flywheel has a different amount of teeth. It is a different diameter so it will not work. The first thing we have to do is drain the fluids. Loosen those two and those two. We're going to lift the radiator out. It's about 12.30, November the 27th. It's Thursday, that means today's Thanksgiving. So let's all take a moment, 
Think about what we're thankful for. Shut up! What you should do is remove the wheels. We, you should work on work on taking the wheels off and take the axles off. Take that axle out on that side, the driver's side axle. We're taking the axles out, which will help us lift the motor out. We're going to lift the motor and the transmission as one whole unit if we can. Uh, Justin's trying to succeed. Turn some wrenches. Yeah, we're just taking the axles out, and this thing should just lift right out after we take the rear motor mount out and the AC line and the cool temperature sensor. So I'd say we're probably about 10 minutes away. Success. That fall or what? What wrench? Right now I'm taking out the. It's this is the downpipe that connects the to the exhaust manifold. I just put this exhaust manifold in, so these bolts should come right out quite easily. All right, rear motor mount nuts out. Let's keep going on this exhaust there, Eric. Yeah, I'll just drop the wrench there. Well, it doesn't really have anywhere else to go. So I'm going to have to drop it here and pivot this thing out and move it. Huh. Well, that'll explain where my exhaust leak was. At the back of the cat, there's supposed to be a pipe here, but it it right off. This is where the tailpipe would go. So, now there's no uh, chance of salvaging this. Very rotted. Pump it out of here.